It's about damn time we had a new Ghostbusters Afterlife trailer. Oh yeah, son, I had to bust that out. Favorite part of a Ghostbusters movie is all the merchandise and toys, and I want that little RC car in the trailer. That looked awesome. Let me actually look that up. I'll take your entire stock! But we did get another trailer for Ghostbusters Afterlife. What I'm gonna be doing here for you guys is giving you my trailer breakdown, pointing out Easter eggs you might have missed, a couple of details in here for diehard Ghostbuster fans, really teasing us with some appearances of the OG Ghostbusters in here, along with maybe some OG villains as well. But I'm gonna need your guys' opinions down below. What did you think of this trailer for Ghostbusters Afterlife? Because I'm gonna be honest with you, whoever is making the trailers for Ghostbusters Afterlife, you are freaking nailing it, because every time a new trailer comes out, it gives me chills. I get the feels like they have mastered the nostalgic feeling of watching these Ghostbuster trailers. Maybe that's just me. As well as don't be forgetting to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. So there's a lot of big epic reveals in this trailer. Starting off, we get the opening of where our characters are located and that is in Somerville, Oklahoma. Now, Jason Reitman, the director, went ahead and did a trailer breakdown with IGN, which like, man, I can't believe I'm competing with a trailer breakdown with a director. I tried to get him on this channel by offering him a bag of Stay Puft marshmallows. I don't think he's gonna take the offer, guys. But some details he revealed about the movie and this trailer is that yeah, it 100% confirms our theories that this is the family of Egon and we are watching the children of Harold Ramis's character and that's who will be continuing on this legacy. It's kind of nice that all of us Ghostbuster fans figured that this was the obvious situation and now they're no longer hiding it and just putting it front and center. The real question to ask now is why and we get some real hints of that like when McKenna Grace is looking through the house and she's able to find a ghost trap in the floorboards. Definitely Definitely seems like something Egon would do. As far as this house goes, this is one of our first Easter eggs here. The director revealed that he made the top of this house look reminiscent to the top of what the Ecto-1 would look like with all these satellites and wires coming out. I think that's actually really clever and smart. And if you hear the director, Jason Reitman, who is the son of the original Ghostbusters director, Ivan Reitman, he puts so much attention to detail in this movie that it really does feel like a continuation of the old Ghostbuster movies. As the trailer continues on, we get one of our first legacy cameos in here and that is the character of Annie Potts who you might remember being the secretary of the Ghostbusters and having some great one-liners when she answers the phone you gonna answer that quit better jobs than this Ghostbusters, what do you want? Now, one thing, it's not super clear, though, if she did end up with Egon. If you're a fan of those previous Ghostbuster movies, you know that she would have a flirtatious relationship with him. And it very much seemed like they would end up together. So this could be the grandmother of some of the kids in the Ghostbusters movie. She talks about how Egon wasn't really much of a homemaker, that they had trouble paying bills and keeping the lights on. But then we cut to Finn Wolfhard's character in the garage, working on the Ecto-1, trying to get it to work, as I assume he's 16 years old and is desperately wanting a car, but they probably probably can't afford it, so if he can fix this up, he could drive off with it. Now they do some clever editing here. Whenever they finish fixing the car up and have it ready to go, this does not seem to be the same body of Finn Wolfhard. If you cut back, he's wearing different clothes when he's working on the car, and this person is wearing one giant overall. This could be later in the movie, and Finn Wolfhard is wearing some sort of mechanics outfit, or it could be an original Ghostbuster who comes in to fix the car for him. That would be kind of awesome, because I know there's gonna be people nitpicking about how does a kid know how to fix an old car. But it's here where the trailer starts turning into some of its more dramatic story points and we get some big revelations to what is going on in connections to past Ghostbuster movies. So we find out that Paul Rudd's character, who is a teacher, actually came to this town because it was having non-stop earthquakes that he thinks is very off because the underground structure does not warrant this town to be having that many earthquakes. And they didn't show it here, but in the first trailer, they showed us that the mine shaft, so the underground of this town, was built by a shandy. Shandor, and that name should kind of sound familiar to you because Ivo Shandor is the same person who constructed the building in the first Ghostbuster movie that was actually meant to be an opening gateway for the villain Gozer. And this villain Gozer has a cult following, so it would make sense that there would be other locations that are built to be gateways for this character to come back. And we know 100% that it is going to be Gozer that they're fighting because we get a quick glimpse at Gozer and that hairline is undeniable, okay? That is 
is definitely Gozer and the exact same hair that this villain had in the first Ghostbuster movie, so can't wait to see that again. Also want to point out when they're in this mine shaft, you can see two statues of demon dogs in the same way they were statues of demon dogs on the building in the original Ghostbusters. This is most likely how we're going to get freaking terror dogs back in this movie, but they won't be exactly the same as we saw them in the original film. Because one, while we do see similarities, like when they're chasing Paul Rudd down at this Walmart that I absolutely love how fumbly they are, reminds me a lot of how they were in the first Ghostbuster movie. We also see that they have like an astral projection now because Paul Rudd here is staring at one right in the face and other toys have shown us that they'll be able to stand on their hind legs. So they'll be a little different, more advanced, but the ultimate purpose of a terror dog is to go ahead and inhabit the body and create a gatekeeper and a key master. Sigourney Weaver's character in the original movie was the gatekeeper and Rick Moranis' character, the neighbor, was the key master. In this movie, it looks like the key master will be Paul Rudd and the gatekeeper will most likely end up being the kids' mom. Other cool Easter egg shots in the trailer here, we get to see some older adult hold a PK meter. In the original Ghostbusters, these were used to test ghost level energies in a room. And like I said, this guy's wearing the same mechanical outfit that seems to have fixed the Ecto-1 earlier in the trailer. So your guess is as good as mine, whether this is Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd's character. Also can go without mentioning this whole sequence that happens inside of a Walmart that I'm glad is not a commercial. Well, I know it's product placement, but I thought when they showed this clip earlier in the year that it was made just for commercial purposes. But no, it's actually part of the movie and we have mini Stay Puff marshmallows coming out of their bags to attack Paul Rudd's character. The director mentioned that he got inspiration from watching Gremlins with these guys, so they'll be mischievous in that same same way I'm really thinking all these marshmallows will probably compile together and we'll get another giant stay puff marshmallow another great Easter egg here is we have a physical ghost with some practical effects that's one thing I liked about this movie that they're trying to use practical effects as much as possible and the director said that this ghost is actually inspired by the taxi ghost that we see in the first Ghostbuster movie he also mentions that he wanted to make every ghost in this movie feel unique and different and not that they were all just exactly the same because even though I wasn't someone who hated the 2016 Ghostbuster movie. I thought it was fine. I did hate the ghost designs in that movie. They all felt super generic, very Disney-fied. So I'm glad we're going back to more unique looks for ghosts. Speaking of some unique ghost looks, we do get a chase sequence here in the trailer with our characters in the Ecto-1. They even pass by a mural of the Stay Puft Marshmallow. And we even get to see some new attachments to the Ecto-1 that they added in after Ghostbusters 2, but also before they decided to quit being Ghostbusters. I'm going to be very curious to see if this art RC trap that is coming out which is just a ghost trap with wheels on it was made by the kids themselves or this was something that Egon and the previous Ghostbusters had made but they are chasing a new ghost in the air and I know a lot of people get confused and worried but no this is not the ghost Slimer this is a brand new ghost similar to Slimer who has the name Muncher and he'll get that name for obvious reasons because he'll love to munch on a lot of stuff just like Slimer did I don't think this is our Slimer replacement either it's just probably another one of those type of ghost. I hope we still get a Slimer cameo somewhere in here. Another cool Easter egg and detail added in is the director mentioned that he wanted to make these pink streaks that we see coming out of the mountains from this small town are supposed to resemble the same pink streaks that we saw in the first Ghostbuster movie. So like I said, it's all this paying attention to detail that makes it real nostalgic for me. But speaking of nostalgia, they hint to us that we are going to be seeing the original OG Ghostbusters pop in because we get our characters calling in to what I believe is Dan Aykroyd's character of Ray in his bookstore that he had in Ghostbusters 2 looks almost identical answering the same red phone that the Ghostbusters had in their firehouse this was such a clever way to tease the OG cast because it's like who are you gonna call and they're actually calling them now some people might also notice that there is a tattoo on Dan Aykroyd's arm the director mentioned that this tattoo is in reference to a conversation that he had with Winston's character in the first movie where they were quoting something that happened in the Bible so I guess this is just a reminder to him of why they do what they did so anyone fearing that we were just gonna see little kid ghost busting nope the OG cast is said to be a big part of the final act of the movie where I guess the remaining living Ghostbusters are gonna band together to stop Gozer once again we also know that they're definitely gonna be suiting up and wearing proton packs because one Bill Murray was talking about at his age how horrible it was to put on that proton pack and how heavy they were and we even just today got toys 
of the old Ghostbusters in their outfits. Oh, I can't wait to see that scene go down. Hopefully no one has to make a really sad sacrifice. But that is just all the details and Easter eggs that I was able to catch in this Ghostbusters trailer. I want you Ghostbuster fans to leave me your opinions down below. What did you think of this trailer? Did it hype you up? Did it give you the chills? Are you looking forward to this movie? Anything and everything, be sure to leave your thoughts down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.